Be seated. Yes, Mr. Ashton. 840 this morning, I was handed by council documents under the indication that these were to be used by witness Dr. Kenneth Furton in his testimony. In them, in my quick review of them in the 10 minutes until I told the court I needed time, I've discovered that apparently Dr. Kurt, Dr. Furton has done additional research since his report in my deposition, which is a surprise to me, on specific issues such as identification of sources of chloroform, which he was specifically asked, page 87 of his deposition indicated he couldn't particularly account for, gave some general speculations. Apparently now he's proposing to present a specific slide identifying that. He, and I apologize if, if I can't give you exact quotes, but also in his deposition, he was asked about the possible sources of the odor signature and basically indicated he wasn't really aware. It could be various things and didn't identify anything particularly. And I've just been handed slides where apparently he's now planning to point out specific items and claim, I assume, they're the source of the odor. So I'm afraid, that once again, we are in the position of experts having supplemented their opinions without notice to the state. I, again, I, I only have 10 minutes to look at this, but it does appear that I wanted to bring it to the court's attention. So before Dr. Furton testifies, I would request we have a full Richardson hearing on the matter. Well, we won't be having one today. So uh, we'll have one at the close of testimony, but he will not testify to anything that is not in his report. He can come back uh, next week to finish it up, but... Uh, Mr. Baez, do you have anything you need to say? Yes. Uh, it, it's, it appears that the state uh, is incorrect. Uh, he's, at, he's been asked about these issues. These are issues that are the center of the case. Uh, I, all, all I need to know, Mr. Baez... Has his opinions changed since he was asked in his deposition? If they have, have he submitted a supplemental report that complies with this court's order that all experts not only disclose their opinions, but the underlying facts or data that supports their opinions? That's the only two questions I need to know answers to. I do not see any new opinions that are being rendered here that weren't uh, testified at either his uh, Fry hearing testimony, deposition, or, uh, or his report. Uh, this is a demonstrative PowerPoint that he wanted to use. I made a copy. Of, I asked him for a copy of it. I, he arrived this morning. I immediately gave it to Mr. Ashton. And, you know, I, I guess the more times you make this argument, it, it, I guess it becomes real at some point, even though it's not true. So uh, he, uh, Mr. Ashton could continue to make these allegations and make, them al and make the allegations, and then maybe all of a sudden they, uh, they come to fruition in his world. But I do not believe them to be true. Uh, all I would ask is an opportunity to present a, an argument before the court, before Dr. Furton testifies, once I've had a chance to thoroughly examine the deposition and demonstrate those areas where his testimony has been supplemented, or may have been supplemented. Again, I don't know what he's going to say, but I would just make that request. This is the proof. He's asking for more time to review his deposition. He doesn't even know if this is new or not. So let me just go ahead and make the accusation, even though I don't have the proof, is what he's saying. And if, he, if he knows a specific part that if he's reviewed that deposition and knows that, uh, that this is not in, and he's reviewed the Fry testimony and knows that that's not in, uh, then, then, he can, then he has an argument. But unless he's done that, I don't think he should be, before your honor, making allegations that he has no support for. Line 12 through, uh, I believe, middle of the next page, where there's a discussion about where the chloroform came from, and he gives no information other than that speculation and is very vague in terms of cleaning products, etc. The PowerPoint has specific chloroform amounts for specific items from the trunk. 
That's just the one I found quickly, sir. These amounts were from the, uh, te uh, the testimony of Dr. Rickenbach, uh, and which counsel uh, got from Dr. Rickenbach, which wasn't in his report. If you, if you recall, Dr. Rickenbach, he went through a chart. I may even have the paper here where he asked him to go into percentages of how much chloroform was there. And Dr. Rickenbach went down the line, 0.01%, 0.05%, and so on and so forth, all of which was not in his report. And, that's, and this is what I, this, he's stating it right here, detected an FBI chemistry unit. And he cites Dr. Rickenbach. So for M Mr. Ashton to say that he doesn't know about any of this. Well, some might have provided me a copy of his report since I don't think you filed it. I have a copy of his deposition. And then uh, we will see. Uh, this demonstrative aid uh, is it of the same uh, type of thing that the defense has to be excluded uh, and which was excluded because it was not uh, provided to the defense? Your Honor, I, can, uh, I, I don't have an extra copy. Maybe counsel can provide the court with a copy of it, but it appears that it also okay. appears to cite studies that are not included in the report, uh, more recent studies that were not included, not available, not discussed. Okay. Somebody get me a copy of the gentleman's report. I have his deposition, uh, and I will deal with it, but... Uh... Your Honor, we're not going to go through this. We will have him uh, tailor his testimony to items that the state is fully aware of. There's nothing secret going on here. Uh, if, if he's objecting to the PowerPoint, we'll take out whatever slides he has issues with, if they're legitimate issues, and, and we'll take it from there. This, this, this really has gone on uh, long enough, and we're, we're not willing to, to, to go into that. So I, I, if I have to uh, tailor his testimony uh, and, and narrow it, I, I am more than willing to do, do so, because I think he has plenty to say and uh, I, I, all of these issues may be unnecessary, completely, well, totally unnecessary. Gentlemen, I don't know. The only thing I can do is uh, read his report, read his deposition, and see whether or not he has changed any opinions and, and whether or not he has not uh, complied uh, with this court's order. Uh, and then... Once I make that determination, then we will move uh, from there. Uh, you would think that this would have grown old by now, but I guess uh, some things never change. Mr. Mason? I can't hear you. An entirely different subject I'd like to ask. Yes, sir. Madam Court Reporter. All right. Does both sides concur that a legal issue has arisen? unrelated to the issue that we talked about uh, first thing this morning, dealing with Dr. Ferdin, that would necessitate us recessing for today. Ms. Burdick? Defense would agree as well. Okay, then uh, we will be in recess to 8.30 Monday.